let's look at this whole deal about confidence intervals. So you know there's no way you can get 100% correct, right? And so if I have a sample, then I could actually create an interval of confidence that if I continue to just keep going out and getting samples, getting samples, getting samples, that a percentage that whatever I decide, and you get to decide that, there's typically um, percentages that are used like 90%, 95%, 98, 99, and all that good stuff, but that I would expect that population parameter to be within that interval. So one thing that you have to understand is let's say that I'm actually looking for a 95% confidence interval, all right? So what that means is within this interval, I'm going to have a lower value and an upper value, and it's going to be around the sample means, okay? So, I mean, you might take one sample and it may end up being here, another sample and end up being here, and so on. But what we're going to do is take the average of all of those and then get these upper and lower values. So to be able to do this, one, you have to understand how to use the confidence interval formula, which shows right here. And the key to this formula, well, first of all, let's just look at it. So it says the sample mean, I can get that if I have data, plus and minus a Z value, come back to that. And then the standard deviation, I can find that if I have data, and then divided by the square root of the sample size. I can find that too. So all these values I could find. What I would do is get where you start to write instead, in, instead of just staring at symbols, right? Because there's all kinds of symbols. The sample mean, now my dog's going to start barking. The standard deviation, and then N is my sample size. Barking, barking brought to you by Scout. All right, so I, I see I need Z values. So I need this lower Z and I need this upper Z. So to understand how to read the Z table, this is the middle area. So if you remember, you actually read from the bottom to that value or from the bottom to that value. Well, what are, what are these areas here? Remember, this is probabilities. All probabilities have to add to one. So this area here then, I would find it by one minus 0 0.9500, which of course is 0 0.05. But now I have to cut it in half. In other words, half of it's here. And so 0 0.025. And then the other half of it, I don't know why I'm put alpha. Alpha, I wasn't. I wasn't talking about alpha yet. <laughs> and then the other half would be here. So when you read the table, you're either going to look up 0 0.025, which is probably the easiest, and this will be the negative, and this will be the positive Z, or you're going to look up 0.975. Why? Because notice all of this area is the bottom 0 0.025 added to the middle area. All right, so if I go to a Z table and let's just do the easy way and say, well, let's just find this negative because then I know it's plus and minus the, the, the area of 0 0.025. So I look around in the table, looking around, looking around. Let me get my, my pen going here because I want to circle it. And I'm looking for the area that is closest to 0.250. Well, I'll find it right there. And so that's going to be a Z of negative 1.96. So as I mentioned, then my lower is the negative and my upper is the positive. So this Z value would be negative 1.9, hello, negative 1.96, if it'll let me write, it won't let me write, nine, come on, bud, you can do it, <laughs> okay, so that's a negative 1.96, and the upper is positive 1.96, all right, for some reason, it didn't want me to write right there, 
So now I have everything I need for the top right hand corner to do the formula. Well, you know me, I ain't doing anything manually. I'm going to go get Excel. So there's also, which is kind of cool, so you just saw me do the 95, 1.96. There's also little cheat tables, and I always tell students just to grab these so you don't have to keep going back and trying to read the table for confidence intervals. But now you can see with the formula, the plus and minus 1.96, so the, the Z minus 1.96 plus 1.96. So I see everything that I need, so I need the mean. So I'm going to do a, let me move this over a little bit. I'm going to do a 95% confidence interval, and then I'm going to do a 98% and kind of just see what happens. So I see by the formula, I need a mean, I need a Z, I need a standard deviation, and I need a sample size. And then from there, I'm going to find the lower limit and then the upper limit of my confidence interval. What do I mean by the lower? So that's that lower value, and then the upper value. So to do that, I have some data here, and it's all 50 states, the average price for a gallon of milk. I don't know how old this data is, because I don't buy a gallon of milk, but maybe it's cheap, I don't know. So what I need is I need to find the average, so the mean of this data set, so I selected my data, so B2 through B51, feel like I'm playing bingo. So find the average, then the Z value, which I just found, 1.96, okay, either by the table or my, my nice little cheat table over here. And then my standard deviation, well, I know how to do that by now, STDEV, highlight, oops, highlight my data, and B2 through B51, so my standard deviation, which is kind of high, right? I'm um, 38, almost 39 cents. And then my N, I know there's 50 states, 50 values. So from here, I want to know with 95% confidence, if I go out and get a whole bunch of samples, would I expect that population mean to fall in within this interval? And so my lower, I'm just staring at this formula equals my sample mean minus, because that would be the lower, my Z times my S divided by the square root, so I can get it to do the square root for me, of my sample size. So look at this, it's, it's the lower end, so it's taking this sample mean minus my Z, and why am I using a Z? Because I want to get this confidence, 95%, and then times my standard deviation over the square root of my sample size, and that would be the lower. If I want to find the upper, I take the mean now plus my Z value times my standard deviation divided by the square root of my sample size. So this will give me my upper value. So I press enter, and so I could see, and with this being in two decimals and even being dollars, I could probably do that. I could see that it looks like this interval, the 95% interval for the price of a gallon of milk, is between 258 and 279. Well, what if I wanted to do a 98% confidence interval? The only thing that's going to change is my Z now becomes 2.33. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these values. So when I do equal and I click on it, it just copies the value. Equals, because I'm too lazy to retype it. And now I can actually copy my lower and upper over. Okay, so double click on it just to see, oh yeah, it moved my formula over. And so again, the only thing that changed is my confidence. Well, think about it. If I'm at 95% confidence here and now 98, my interval is getting wider, right? the more confidence, okay, so the higher the confidence, the wider my interval. Let's do one more thing. Let's, let's say, so let's copy that. Let's go back to my 95% standard deviation. And now let's say, what would happen if I took a larger sample size? So instead of 50, let's say I had 200 samples. And let's see what happens now with my upper and lower limit, okay? 
So I'm comparing, let's highlight these, these two, because those are my 95%. So as you can see with the larger the sample size, notice 258 is coming into 263, 279. So in other words, your accuracy is getting better. You're getting a better accuracy, okay? And so there's different things you can play around with the formula. You could say, well, why not? Let's make it 100 and see what happens, okay? So this is going to depend on your accuracy. But definitely use Excel um, to do this formula for you because you really want it to be able to find the mean and the standard deviation. And that's confidence intervals.